Every time I upload a new video, I get comments like these. Even though there are already so many video tutorials on skin smoothing effect in Photoshop, I would still like to share the techniques I use to achieve the popular Mr. Beast cartoonish face effect. But before I show you my process, first I'll analyze Mr. Beast's thumbnails and take some notes. Let's take this thumbnail for example. By observing his face, we can notice the following. His face is very bright and very smooth. There are no wrinkles or anything like that. Contrast between the skin and his facial hair and eyebrows is very strong. His teeth are 100% white and also super bright. Same goes for his mouth. It's bright, but also very vibrant and smooth. The eyes are very noticeable. Sclera is also fully white and iris is clear, bright and sharp. And the final observation is that he has this subtle highlight on the edge of the face. This is more noticeable in some of his other thumbnails. And one more thing to mention is the skin tone color. In some cases, it's light red or pink, and in other cases, it's light orange or yellow. So by having these things in our minds, let's see how we can achieve a similar effect. Step 1. First, I'll start by removing any creases and wrinkles from his face. For this, I'll use the Spot Healing Brush Tool. This tool helps greatly for removing the smaller creases from the face. And in some more complex cases like this one, I'll just use a lasso tool to make a selection around the part I'd like to change. And with a content-aware fill, Photoshop will solve the issue pretty much instantly. Here's before and here's after. Step 2. For the skin smoothening, I just like to make a copy of the photo and then clip it to the original. While the copy of the photo is selected, I'll open Camera Raw Filter where I'll adjust two sliders, Texture and Noise Reduction. For texture, I'll move the slider to the left, usually something like minus 50 works pretty good. And for the noise reduction, I'll move the slider to the right to about 60. Considering this affects the whole image, I'll create a layer mask and invert it. And then by using a soft brush with low flow, I'll paint over the skin while trying to avoid any hair, mouth, and eyes. Step 3. One of the ways to apply dodge and burn effect to the photo is by creating two curves adjustments layers. This is a non-destructive way of editing, meaning I can easily go back later and change the values of what I'm doing now. In the first curves adjustments layer, I will grab the slider in the middle and move it down. This will darken the image. Once I do this, I'll invert the layer mask and then duplicate the layer. In the duplicate layer, I'll move the slider up, which will make the photo brighter. Considering that both adjustments currently have an inverted layer masks, they won't be visible unless I paint over them with a white brush. So I'll take the brush, make sure it's soft, the flow is around 5%, and I'll start brushing over the face. Generally, you'll want to dodge the face cheeks, top of the nose, forehead, around the mouth, and in this case, the skin area on his chin with no beard. And then the areas to burn, you'll want to paint both sides of the nose, outer sides of his cheeks, and these parts here. I also like to paint over the hair and beard because it creates a stronger contrast. Step 4. Editing the teeth is a two-step process. First, I'll add the human saturation adjustment layer. Choose yellows and move the saturation slider all the way to the left. This should remove all the yellows and I'll paint over an inverted mask because I want it to affect only the yellow shades on his teeth. Second step is making the teeth brighter. I'll do this by creating a curves adjustment layer and pulling the slider up which will make everything brighter. By copying the layer mask from previous layer, this curves adjustment layer will only affect the teeth. Step 5. For the eyes, I'll create three adjustment layers. First will be hue and saturation adjustment layer. I will click on colorize and move the slider to the middle until I get a nice blue color. And then on the inverted layer mask, I'll paint only over his iris. The second adjustment layer will be once again a curves adjustment layer, in which I'll move the slider from the middle up. This will brighten up the iris. In order for it to affect only the iris, I'll apply the same layer mask from the previous adjustment. And third change to his eyes that I'm going to do will be making his sclera even whiter. I'll do it again with curves. Same process once again, moving the slider from the middle up to make it brighter. Then on an inverted layer mask, I'll just paint over the white areas around the iris. And that's it for the eyes. Step 6. I don't usually like to exaggerate skin tones. 
So in this case, I will make the face just a tiny bit more pink and yellow. I'll achieve this by creating two selective color adjustment layers. In the first one, I'll choose red color and move the magenta slider to the right, and then choose the yellow color and do the same. This makes the face just a tiny bit more pink. And for the second selective color adjustment layer, I'll just duplicate the one I already have. Restore the sliders to default, and then move the yellow slider to the right, which will add yellow tones to the red areas of the face. This change is very subtle but necessary in my opinion. Selective color adjustment layer is very powerful, and if you haven't used it before, I greatly suggest you try it out and see what you can achieve with it. Step 7. To make the face contrast even stronger, I'll once again create a new curves adjustment layer. But this time, I'll make an S-curve on the graph, as you can see on the screen. I'll make sure to clip it to the original layer because I want it to affect only the body of our subject and nothing else. Step 8. I want to make everything a little bit brighter, and I'll easily achieve this with an exposure adjustment layer, in which I'll move the exposure slider slightly to the right. This same effect can be done with a curves adjustment layer too. You just need to move the slider up. Step 9. There are some areas on his face that are extra red, so I'd like to tone it down. For example, at the front of his hair, and on these three places below. So to remove it, I'll create one more selective color adjustment layer, and by affecting only the red color, I'll move the first slider to the right. This will tone down the red tones, which is exactly what I want. Once I have the sliders right, I'll invert the layer mask, and with a brush tool, I'll paint over the areas I want to remove. Step 10. Lips may look a bit too pink here, so let's change it to red, which is more realistic. You guessed it, I'll do this by creating yet another selective color adjustment layer. In the settings, I'll choose the color magentas, and I'll move the sliders around until I get the result I am happy with. In most of the thumbnails, Mr. Beast has a mouth wide open and his tongue is very visible. If that was the case here, I'd apply the same technique that I used for lips to color correct it. And for the final step, I'll add the edge highlights. If we take a look at Mr. Beast's thumbnails, you can notice there's a white outline at the edge of his face. The intensity and position of this depends on the environment and the light source. But for the sake of showing you how I do it, I'll apply the effect to both sides of his face. I'll just create a new adjustment layer that's 100% white. The way I choose to do it is the human saturation adjustment layer, but it can also be done in so many other ways. The main reason I like to do it this way is in case I need to change the background later and the source light is, for example, green. Then, I can easily open the adjustment layer and change the color of it. Once I have the white layer, I'll invert the mask, pick a soft brush tool, change the flow to 15 or 20% and slowly paint over the edges of the face. If the intensity is too strong, I'll lower the opacity of the layer to make it look more right. Step 12. Now that I think I'm done with the edits, I'll select all of it and convert to a smart object. This way I'll turn 16 layers into one, and later if I have to go in and change certain adjustments, I can just open the smart object and edit it in there. This is extremely useful if you're working with hundreds of layers inside your project. Anyway, now that I have the complete edit package inside of one smart object, I can apply the camera raw filter to it. Inside the camera raw filter, I'll boost the texture and sharpness sliders to bring more details. I don't want it to affect the whole face, so I'll select the Smart Filters mask and invert it. With the Soft Brush tool selected then, I'll paint over the areas of high interest in detail, such as eyes, mouth, and beard. And just like that, we're done. Here's the comparison from before and after. The great thing about this workflow is that every setting and value can easily be revisited later and corrected if necessary. And to thank you for stopping by and watching this video, I've included a download link for the Photoshop action that instantly creates all the necessary adjustment layers with just one click. This saves me a lot of time when I edit faces and thumbnails, and I hope it will save some time for you as well. If you've got any questions, you can find me on Twitter at the Joseph Blaze or Discord server Thumbnails101. Cheers.